Welcome to the Courting Happiness Podcast. This is a space where self-care becomes part of your day. A space where you learn evidence-based strategies to help your life, share it with those you love, and cultivate well-being at work. I'm your host, Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm a former news director, television reporter turned happiness scholar, TEDx speaker, and transformational trainer. I also understand hardships. While working my dream job in television, I lived a nightmare suddenly becoming a young widow after 86 days of marriage. Marriage. I became committed to learning more about resilience, healing, and happiness. This is how I discovered my area of research, which is positive psychology. Now I'm living my calling of training individuals and organizations on happiness. And my new chapter begins with being happily engaged. The courting and courting happiness is about a true courtship. I like to say commitment with happiness. The K in courting stands for the vulnerability of sharing my story, inspirational interviews with phenomenal people, the infusion fusion of positive psychology, and so much more. You'll learn how to commit to your well-being one episode at a time. I hope you subscribe and share. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to episode 108. I'm Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm so happy that you're here. So today, let's talk about toxic workplaces. I have a question for you. Have you ever worked in an environment like that? Have you ever felt that it is overwhelming, consuming, and you beginning to question yourself? Or better yet, have you thought about how it's made you feel? Or better yet, you've gone through so much in a toxic work environment, you can't help but to go through all of these different dynamics as it relates to your emotions. Well, let me ask you another question. Have you thought about how it affects your health? Well, it's interesting because the Wall Street Journal has just published an article by Lindsay Ellis that discusses how a truly a toxic workplace can affect your health and how toxic workplaces are bad for your mental as well as your physical health. And the article also mentions how mentally healthy workplaces help include growth opportunities, work-life balance, and community. In the United States, the Surgeon General is telling Americans that toxic workplaces can harm your health, And this is coming directly from the Wall Street Journal article. And as a journalist (laughs) turned happiness scholar, I couldn't help but to want to dive in deeper after after reading the Wall Street Journal article. And so what I found is that the actually today, as timely as this is, that the United States Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, announced all of this in a press release. And he also launched new framework as it relates to mental health and well being in the workplace. I will say this you can read both the Wall Street Journal article and the press release by visiting our website at slash podcast slash episode 108. That's drcourtneyalston.com slash podcast slash episode 108. So let's talk about this release by the Surgeon General. He says this, and I'm going to quote him. He says, a healthy workforce is the foundation for thriving organizations and healthier communities. He also adds this, as we recover from the worst of the pandemic, we have an opportunity right, to really make workplaces engines for mental health and well-being. I like that. And the Surgeon General announced a framework that shows where we can start. And he also mentions how it's really about asking organizations to rethink how they protect workers from harm and really fostering levels of connection, among their workforce and showing workers that they 
one of our special things that we talk about often in the Courting Happiness podcast, showing workers that they matter. It's all about being seen safe and supported, right? And he also mentions making space for their lives outside of work and supporting their growth. He also mentions it's really worth it because the benefits will truly, really not only serve the workers, so the workforce, but organizations as well. So in the Surgeon General's Framework for Mental Health and Well-Being in the Workplace, Dr. Murthy outlines five essentials, five essentials for workplace mental health and well-being to help organizations really develop and really begin to really institutionalize their processes and also really evaluating policies, updating these policies and practicing and supporting mental health and workplace well-being. So we're going to talk about all five, and I'm really so happy to see this information and seeing how the Surgeon General is really helping to move organizations forward as it relates to workplace well-being. So here's number one, protection from harm. He mentions creating conditions for physical and psychological safety. And he mentions how it's a critical, it's really critical as it relates to the foundation of ensuring mental health and well-being in the workplace. So it helps in terms of promoting the practices that really allow people to feel protected, assuring protection from harm. And workplaces can do this. And he mentions five elements, or really, I'm sorry, four elements as it relates to protection from harm. Pri prioritizing workplace um, physical and psychological safety, right? Enable adequate rest. Normalize and support focusing on mental health. And number four is operationalize diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility norms, policies, and programs. And this is all under the protection from harm. Here's number two, connection and community. He mentions fostering positive social interaction. And as a happiness scholar, I really value and treasure that it's being qualified. It's one of the things I really value about positive psychology. It's not just simply, oh, we're going to just have relationships or the value of relationships, but it's also qualifying that in terms of positive relationships. So he mentions fostering positive social interaction and relationships in the workplace supports worker well-being. He also mentions in order to promote, the, the, promote, promote these practices, excuse me, that better assure connection and community, he said, these are, the, these are the elements, the three things that workplaces can do. Create cultures of inclusion and belonging. Number two, cultivate trusted relationships. And number three, foster collaboration and teamwork. These elements are really important in terms of really building connection. But I also really value this because I also I, I see it as really serving as this great anchor, right, in regards to um, all the other elements in terms of what we just heard in terms of um, really actually protection of harm from harm serving as that anchor, right, in terms of helping build and develop community. I love that he talks about the importance of creating cultures of inclusion and belonging. One of the things I really valued is seeing as a, as a trend is starting to see um, organizations take on these roles in terms of thinking about the value of belonging. For some time, we begin to see roles as relates to diversity and inclusion. And I'm so happy to be able to see even more of these positions. And it's interesting um, when I uh, see positions that are focused in on belonging. 
that is so promising. I really treasure and value that. And really also, um, really, really treasure the fact that he is talking about this in regards to cultivating this collaborative dynamic, but with trusted relationships. And that's why safety is so important, right? In terms of working in a safe environment so those relationships can really be fostered in terms of this trust dynamic. When you're in a toxic work environment, it can be really hard to possibly find some elements that you might be able to trust, especially if so many people who are working there are feeling divorced from themselves and feeling so divorced from themselves that it's hard for them to connect and trust the people around them. So it's so important in terms of the connection and community. Here's number three. He's talking about work-life harmony. Hmm, I like that. He says professional and personal roles can create work and non-work conflicts in order to promote practices that better assure work-life harmony workplaces can do these things. And he mentions four. Number one is provide more autonomy over how work is done. I think we learned a lot about that throughout, throughout the pandemic, right? He also mentions make schedules as flexible and predictable as possible. Number three, increase access to paid leave. And number four is respect boundaries between work and non-work time. Boundaries are so powerful. And I really value that he's talking about the importance of the work-life harmony. I mean, that is in itself <laughs> harmonious, right? But there's so much value in regards to having levels of autonomy, having really a culture of valuing how someone can get their work done, meaning maybe it's allowing them to work, continue to work remotely or having some type of hybrid model. And also the value of respecting boundaries between work and non-work time. Because the worst thing is being in a toxic environment and even when you're home, it still is following you because there's a lack of boundaries, right? And next thing you know, um, you know, you may have someone who thinks it is okay to possibly contact an employee at 11 o'clock at night or close to midnight, right? So respecting boundaries between work and non-work time, so important, so essential. Here's number four, mattering at work, mattering at work. So he shares that. People want to know that they matter to those around them and that their work matters. So knowing you matter has been shown to lower stress. He also mentions that while feeling like you do not, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, while feeling like you do not can increase the risk of depression, right? So feeling like you do not if you don't feel like you matter, it can allow you to feel depressed, anxious. And he mentions that in order to better assure a culture of mattering at work, here are some of the things that workplaces can do. And he lists number f- lists four under the um, umbrella of mattering at work. Number one, provide a living wage. I feel like that deserved a great pause. Provide a living wage is so very important and essential. Number two, engage workers in workplace decisions. I like that. I really value that a lot. It And also to me, um, really brings a, a level of community as relates to work, which goes back into, right, the other pillar that we heard earlier. Number three, build a culture of gratitude and recognition my favorite thing. (laughs) I love that. There's, there's so much value in regards to that. I think I've shared in, actually I've shared in previous episodes 
I, I meant to say, I think I shared this in maybe the last episode, but I've shared this in previous episodes, the value of, of, of um, gratitude and what it looks like in terms of the benefits of gratitude. But I also recently shared how even during my meetings, I'm a department chair. I just became a department chair this semester for a university uh, here in my state of North Carolina. And I love it. It's a wonderful and, and really compassionate work environment. And one of the things that I love doing uh, when I am leading meetings with the department, I start off with a strength-based question. And one of the things I really treasured about my new university is that we had a faculty meeting college-wide and during the faculty meeting, they had a gratitude segment where people could come up and talk about what they're grateful for. And I was, oh, I was like, oh my gosh, one of my, so my favorite things. Because it's one of the things that I practice on a personal level that I also incorporate at work that really has served me on multiple, multiple levels. So I treasure that the Surgeon General is mentioning the value of building a culture of gratitude and recognition at work and research supports it. Here's number four, connect individual work with organizational mission. Connect individual work with organizational mission. There's a lot of value in regards to being able to have that connection. In my doctoral program, I was working on my PhD at the University of Florida. And um, uh, when I was working on my dissertation and I focused in on the framework of meaningful work um, with this incredible framework called the map of meaning. And one of the things that I really valued as relates to that theoretical framework it talked about having this level of connection between one's work, right? And and one of the questions really talked about kind of like, you know, how, uh, the God in your work and, and if you feel divorced in your work. And so having that connection is so very important, especially as it relates to it really serving and also the value of meaningful work. So really treasure number four, and also in terms of connecting individual work and organizational mission, but also number four in terms of that umbrella of that pillar of mattering at work, mattering at work. All right, here's last but not least is number five. And number five is about opportunities for growth. And so um, Dr. Murthy mentions when organizations create more opportunities for workers to accomplish goals based on their skills and growth, workers become more optimistic about their abilities and more enthusiastic about contributing to the organization. So in order to promote practices that better assure opportunities for growth, these are the things that he's mentioning that, that organizations that companies can do. And before I get into it, there's so much value in terms of growth and also in terms of the development of having a growth mindset. So every semester in my classes, I have, I spend time at the beginning of semester having an orientation. Part of my orientation with students as it relates to my classes is setting them up for success in regards to the mindset that's needed and the skills that are needed to really help build their skills and to really help them have a successful semester. One of the things that I do is I have um, a lecture and a workshop on growth mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck and talking about the value of having a growth mindset and how that serves you. And I really, I treasure the fact that, um, and I, I keep on saying treasure because I really value so many elements of this because it's so important. I think it's so valuable because I love the fact that this is becoming more and more of a conversation in terms of talking about the, the importance, the impact of workplace well-being and the importance of making sure that we're addressing it. And so 
what I love about the opportunities for growth, it really allows a person to feel that level of connection to, right? And it also allows that individual to feel seen. So I was like, wow, this person really sees what I'm accomplishing or what I'm working on or how I'm leading or what I am achieving or what's meaningful to me or better yet, what matters to me. So this is what he shares in regards to creating more opportunities for growth in the workplace. He says, offer quality training, education, and mentoring. Foster a clear and equitable path for career investment. He also mentions, this is the last one in terms of opportunities for growth, ensure relevant reciprocal feedback. That's so important in terms of really understanding how to share information and, and, and relevant information, but empowering individuals in regards to giving them the, the, the information and, and really the training that they need in terms of professional development. So there's so much value in terms of opportunities for growth. Really, this framework is truly inspirational. And I hope that it inspires you. So I want you to begin to think about some questions. I started off this podcast with asking some questions about if you've ever worked in a toxic work environment. But now, since we're empowered with such great information from Dr. Murthy, I want you to begin to think about how you're going to implement this framework in your life. If you're in a leadership position, how are you going to add this framework in your workplace? And how will you honor your well-being at work? And if you're a person that's listening right now, and if you're in a toxic workplace, I hope this helps you feel seen. Toxic workplaces can foster questioning and gaslighting. And I hope the article, press release, and this podcast empowers you to focus on what serves your well being. Remember, your well being is your most important job. And I'm always here to help. Thank you so much for listening. Let's continue this conversation online. Email us at podcast at drcourtneyalston.com. That's podcast at D-R-K-O-R-T-N-I-A-L-S-T-O-N dot com. Join us on Instagram at Courting Happiness. Don't forget that's courting with a K. Also, I hope you join our private Facebook community. You can find us at Courting Happiness Podcast Community. Our private Facebook group is a safe haven to share, meet more people looking to build positive relationships, focus on well-being, and create a happier life. Now, are you ready to spread happiness? We hope you subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, co-workers, and all the important people in your world. We release a new episode every Thursday. Congratulations on your continued commitment to your courting happiness journey. Thank you so much for listening. We want you to be well, be happier, and be kinder to yourself. We can't wait to see you next week.